brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that supports life and family. 5% of your monthly plan price goes to your favorite charity. Buy the way you believe at CharityMobile.com and use promo code TRADITION. It's political season. I am tired of political season, as you certainly are as well. And by the time you're seeing this, we only have like a month left before hopefully this is all over one way or the other. But because it's political season, your various Catholic outlets are making their pitches to you on who you should support in the contest in November. And the National Catholic Reporter has joined in on this and have basically declared anybody who supports the uh, once and future, probably at this point, future president in the coming contest is a bad Catholic, someone who isn't taking their Catholicism seriously. And they go to a great many lengths to paint a picture for you of high-profile celebrity celebrities becoming Catholic who are rather noticeably leaning in a certain political angle these days, which, by the way, destroys their careers once they become Catholic, because it does. If a Hollywood actor becomes a Catholic and conservative, it's the end of their political, it's the end of their acting career. It just is. Just go look at some of the cases they're going to show you here as examples. But they paint anybody who does that as being bad, as being not real Catholics. It's a wonderful propaganda piece to let you know what the minds of the National Catholic Reporter really think of Catholics and those who don't support the Moloch-loving party in power right now in America. And yes, I understand that the uh, once and future president's uh, position on the sacrifice to Moloch is uh, far from ideal, but that's what we're talking about here. They have written a propaganda piece to try to convince you that you are a bad Catholic if you do not align with the values of the National Catholic Reporter, an outlet that is itself been told many times in the last 50 years to stop calling itself Catholic, that they have no mandate to call itself Catholic, and that they dissent from Catholic teaching, because they do. So we go here to our headline from that outlet. Today's celebrity Catholic converts lean conservative. Everything must be framed in secular politics. Most of us on this side of things admit fully that the Catholic faith doesn't exactly, in when it comes to exercising it in the world outside the church, it doesn't exactly lend itself to a neat left or right way of looking at things. It just doesn't. Especially in America, where the uh, party of the once and future president hasn't exactly been very good on the Moloch sacrifice themselves, lying with a straight face to, to Catholics and to believers of other Christian groups who are opposed to the Moloch sacrifice and claiming that they were going to do something about it and now just instead have stopped lying about it and been much more bluntly open that they have no interest in the issue at all. It is a bad position we find ourselves in, but we often find ourselves in a position where we can't support the other option because they celebrate the diabolical sacrifice of the most vulnerable to Moloch, and they want the government to fund it. And that is where we generally draw the line. And we see these people as often being adversaries of the church, as I'll talk about here towards the end of this. But everything for them must be placed in the realm of secular politics because that is their true religion. They have, to, they have rejected the moral authority of the church completely. They reject the moral teachings of the faith as I will bring to you news stories all the time from the National Catholic Reporter illustrating their advocacy for satanic, overtly evil morality. They do this and they do it without shame, as you'll see here. And here they chastise anybody who is high profile who dares not to think along the lines of the magisterium of the National Catholic Reporter. From the article, quote, Dorothy Day and Thomas Merton, 20th century converts, and Thomas Merton, a heretic, shook up an emerging American Catholic Church. Day brought a zest for socialist and pacifist views with the Catholic worker she co-founded in New York. Merton, the Trappist monk, wrote passionately for African-American civil rights and warnings on the destruction of the Cold War from his hermitage in rural Kentucky. In this century, American, famous American Catholic converts often have a different focus. The vice president for the once and future president is not alone. The roster of prominent American Catholic converts reads like a who's who of wrong think right wing thinkers, advocates, and cultural figures. They include former House Speaker and current Fox News commentator Newt Gingrich, social media influencer Candace Owens, comedian Rob Schneider, 
New York Times columnist Ross Douthat and actor Shia LaBeouf. Many, but not all, support the evil, evil ticket. Some, such as former Trade Chief Robert Lightsider was a part of the first administration of the once and future president and may land a spot in a potential second tenure. Canadian philosopher Jordan Peterson, a social media critic popular in young male North American circles, is said to be on the cusp of conversion, following the example of his wife Tammy. A recent New York Times column by Matthew Schmitz, also a convert, described modern newcomers to Catholicism as a galvanizing intellectual force in today's GOP moving the conservative movement towards an economic policy more attuned to the concerns of workers and to culture war values. End quote. Now, they are right about one thing. Catholics with a sort of a right lean have been, have been critical to this reforming of the GOP, for better or worse. And although it was definitely from the top, from the once and future president, that the Moloch sacrifice was put aside as an issue for on the national scale. Debate that all you want, but that is the reality of things. They then, though, in this article, quote, Catholics who reject Catholic moral teaching and have embraced synodal ecumenicalism, meaning they ask heretics and apostates to describe how bad this is for the Catholic Church. And it's really telling here that they opened that by celebrating Dorothy Day and more especially Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton went to his judgment outside the faith. He had left Catholicism behind by the end of his life. He is known for one book that is still widely read in Catholic circles, but he left the faith. He was not a Catholic in good standing when he went to his judgment, and yet they celebrate him as an example of an ideal American Catholic. You really can't make this stuff up. Here's what the heretics have to say about the sudden rise of new conservative Catholic converts. Quote, not all Catholic converts are happy with the trend. It's really horrible, said Don Eden Goldstein, author and canon lawyer, describing what Vance's newfound prominence has meant for Catholic converts like herself. Eden Goldstein recently caused a social media storm on X when she advocated that Catholics vote for the one that person with a really horrifying laugh, arguing that the other ticket posed a peculiar threat to democracy. Michelle Arnold, another convert, worked for Catholic Answers, a San Diego-based group devoted to defending church teaching. She left after decades as a writer for the organization, explaining the church for inquirers, including potential converts. I was appalled by what happened when, when the once and future president came in, she said. Many in traditional Catholic circles, she said, embraced the former president as a messenger for their views against the sacrifice to Moloch, a political stance which culminated in the appointment of Supreme Court justices who got rid of the diabolic decision that made it possible in the first place. And mostly, quote, couldn't help myself with the way describing, you know, dancing around some of the restrictions on this platform. But these heretics get to me. They really do. It's so brazen, their rejection of the faith. Which is why it's even funnier when they go on to cite the objections of other heretics who dissent from Catholic teaching as some gotcha about Catholics who are politically conservative being bad Catholics because they, or perhaps we, don't follow the magisterium in Francis in all of his modernist, synodalist errors. Because this is all connected. The synod of synodality is connected to this. You know, when Pope Francis spoke recently, he was asked on an airplane about who Americans should support in November. He couldn't bring himself to say the true thing. He told people to support the lesser of two evils, which is the same thing Father Ripperker said. But he also did it in a way that was basically was kind of bludgeoning both candidates in terms of where they stood on issues. Now, that article goes on to describe anyone who supports the Wanchin now probably future president as being a bad Catholic, who puts their politics ahead of their faith, who have lost the touch with as converts uh, that these converts were used in the story because that's what they were used for, was to say, well, if you're not with Thomas Merton and their vision of Catholicism, then you should be with these. But if you're not one of those two acceptable options, then you are a bad Catholic. There's no room for dissent in secular matters with them. You have to accept the abominable practices, the abominable advocacy of the other side in order to be a good Catholic, or at least you have to be someone who has just tuned it all out and is just focused on the faith. There's nothing wrong with being focused on the faith. Many choose that path, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But this is all pretty rich, considering that the alternatives we're faced with this year is an anti-Catholic whose administration put snoops in our parishes 
and has put those who work against a Moloch sacrifice in jail. That has happened. Talk about being not in touch with Catholicism. But what do you expect from the National Catholic Reporter? Are you surprised that the magisterium of the National Catholic Reporter is doing this? That you see this is all part of the political process going on? Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. And hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It certainly helps. So does sharing this on social media. That helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.